Today, I've got something awesome to share with you, a sneak preview at a brand new documentary about the world of sports cards. You're gonna wanna see this. My name is Jeff Wilson. By day, I invest in tech companies. And at night, I invest in sports cards. Join me and my team as we help you profit from the hobby we all love. Hello, sports card investors, and welcome to a very special episode. I'm thrilled to bring this to you today because this is something I think is going to be really great for the sports card hobby and something that I think you are going to find really enjoyable. There is a brand new full-length documentary about sports cards. It's called Behind the Card, and it is now in theaters. Yes, it is in movie theaters, select movie theaters across the country. It is also available on demand on your TV. It just came out and it's really cool. I got to see the film. I love the film. I think you're going to love the film too. Chris Fitzgerald, the producer of the documentary, the creator of the documentary, called me up at the beginning of last year and told me that he was going across the country, that he was filming for his documentary with some of the very biggest names in sports cards and he asked me to be in it and I was honored. I filmed for two days with him and he used a lot of that footage in the documentary along with a lot of footage of so many other leaders in the sports card hobby and he has a lot of really, really great entertaining scenes throughout the documentary. I think it's so cool. I'm excited for you to see it and right now we have an exclusive preview. We're going to show you the trailer from the documentary and then I'm going to bring Chris on to talk a little bit more about it, and we'll feature some more clips from it as we go. Check out the trailer. I first started collecting when I was seven years old. I'd have been eight years old at the time. I was in elementary school. And then I, I stopped collecting. Junior high, like, kind of outgrew collecting cards. When you get to high school, you want to chase girls and get fancy cars. I got into cars or girls or something else, you know, in high school. Then the pandemic hit, and everybody was at home. Victim pulled out the gun. With a disagreement over trading cards. In August of 2020, I got back into it and started buying again. I just recently got back into it about three months ago. One of my friends was like, hey, I just bought a sports card for $15,000. They're not worth that much. There's just no way. And everybody was at home. Everybody had a chance to go through their collection. People realized that there was money to be made in this industry. Okay, explain what is going on. It's like, I just spent 15 grand and I plan to sell it in maybe six weeks time for 10 grand more. I'm like, six weeks time, you're gonna make 10 grand? How is that possible? There are kids in high school right now that will be financially independent by the time they are 30 because they've started investing in sports cards today. Oh, look at that. People laugh at me that I'm looking at Pokemon cards, but you know, I'm having fun because I'm revisiting my childhood. At the same time, I'm monetizing my future. Once you hold these cards in your hand and you realize it's, it's American history, Jackie Robinson's 1948 Leaf and Michael Jordan's rookie card, it brings back all that excitement of a kid. You become addicted and it's exciting and fun. Oh, this is hard. This was against Houston. That's crazy that I look at the picture and I remember the game. I'm working hard every single day to make this rookie car worth something. The money that's in the industry right now is staggering. There's so many people that are coming in that pull out a, a wad of, of $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 to make their weekly purchase. The only reason the sports card market took off was because of me. Because it's my vision to put baseball cards on the map and turn it from a hobby to a multi-million dollar business opportunity. I've never done it like this. By the way, this is very rare for me to do interviews with sports cards. I've turned down everything. Chris, welcome to Sports Card Investor. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Looking forward to talking with you today. I am super excited for this and congratulations. I know the film is already in theaters and available on demand. So right away, tell the audience how they can find this so they can go watch this after this show. Yeah, so the movie is Behind the Card. You can find us at Who's Behind the Card on Instagram for some behind the scenes and understanding where it's going to go in the future. But right now, uh, go to select theaters. So if it's in your area, check out Fandango and, and go see it in person or go on in demand, on demand platforms, and you guys can uh, watch it at home as well right now. I think, you know, this is a really big deal for the hobby that there is a movie 
all about the sports card hobby. And, you know, uh, not, what, an hour and a half or so movie? Actually, how long did the total come out to, Chris? Yeah, hour and 36 minutes, and it's a theatrical, uh, you know, documentary uh, designed for the, for the card space. So the fact that we have a documentary, an hour and 36 minute documentary in movie theaters, select movie theaters across the country, and also in demand across the country, like that's a big deal for the sports card hobby. This is the first one of its type that has made it to theaters, that has made it on demand like this. So first of all, congratulations to you. Is this a, a fulfillment of a, of, a, of a dream? I know you've been working on this for a long time. Yeah, so you know, I, I started collecting at a young age and got a, got back into in quarantine and, and saw a niche uh, for content that wasn't happening in theater. So um, it's always been a dream of mine to create a large scale documentary. And what better than the thing you love most, which is card collecting, right? And uh, we really position this for individuals that aren't in the card collecting community, so that we can continue to get more collectors in this space as we move forward. So I'm excited to talk about how that happens in our documentary here. Yeah, super, super excited. So take us through the process of this. When did this start? When did you come up with the idea you wanted to do a documentary and, and how did you get started? Yeah, so I actually used to live in Los Angeles. During quarantine, I moved to Vegas. And uh, what happens when you move to a smaller knit community? You end up going to Target with your wife. And uh, I actually grabbed a box at the, I think at the time it was like 2019, 20 prison basketball. And I uh, took it home, opened it, hit a Zion, uh, and I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, went back a week later, and I'm like, there's no box of the cards. What's going on? And then a week later, same exact thing. And I'm thinking, was there a distribution chain issue with Panini or Tops? I go online. I start realizing that there's this kind of fiasco going on in the, the retail space of, of collecting boxes and flipping them quick. And then I started going on eBay and selling the, the cards or the boxes that I could get. And all of a sudden, uh, I would say about a month in, my uh, wife comes down and sees me leaving the house with 30 packages to send off to eBay uh, customers. And she was like, what's going on? You're selling like 30 cards a day now. So I started telling her about what's going on in the marketplace, started doing research online. And she essentially said, this sounds like a movie. And I was like, you know what? This does sound like a movie. So let's do a documentary on this. So that's that started a uh, little bit after quarantine. Uh, we spent about six months researching, and then in uh, April of 2021, we actually uh, started filming it uh, across the country. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And there's actually, I've, I've seen the film, there's some really amazing clips in the film from that time when, you know, the retail flipping was going crazy and everything like that. You actually captured some great moments in the film that kind of captured the energy of what was happening at that point in time. Yeah, definitely. And um, there was a little aha moments throughout uh, our time of filming that we just knew that we had something special. And part of that was our crew showed up at like 5, 530 in the morning to Target. And there's 100 people out there like Black Friday, right? So um, we got really lucky that we were capturing this documentary while everything was happening. What I, I call kind of the peak there with the retail side um, of the card market from the, the fiasco that was going on. And uh, essentially, we uh, we were able to film a lot of individuals there. So I'm, I'm excited to show you what that flipper side looked like, because as a card collector, everyone remembers that, right? Everyone for a while there could never get a box of cards if you looked at retail. So it was something that everyone struggled to see. And, and new people coming in, they'll realize how big this is for the industry. Yeah, you guys did a great job capturing that. So this process started in April of 2021 with the actual filming. That's when the filming began. And I know you hit a lot of big name people in the industry uh, over the course of, you know, that spring and that summer. Obviously, you came through Atlanta and I got to spend a couple of days with you here. And I know you captured film as well with Joe Davis from Got Baseball Cards, our, our grading partner here in town. Uh, but I know you got a lot of, of big name people. Who are some of the others who are featured in the film? Yeah, so we actually, uh, during quarantine, essentially still had to do this for COVID rules. We were pretty much at everyone's location. So we did a lot of flying with the team. We started in Florida with Nick Gonzalez. He was a first round draft pick for the Pittsburgh Pirates in 2020. We really wanted to show how uh, someone that never made the major league, but had Bowman prospect cards were selling for so much. So we, we got him involved. We went up to Tennessee. We uh, started the startup HGA for the card community from a, a grading perspective, just to show the rise of startups in the space. Went to you guys in Atlanta, obviously, with Joe Davis. Went out to Puerto Rico with Rob Go. Then went to Dallas, hit up Panini, Beckett, uh, talked with those, uh, the CEO and president there. 
uh, went up to PWCC in Oregon, and then we finished in Vegas with Vegas Dave, Steve Aoki, and Josh Jacobs. Those were some of the more fun interviews at the end. Now, Vegas Dave, that, that's going to bring some controversy along with it, right? There's a lot of people in the sports card hobby, myself included, that don't have a very good impression of Vegas Dave because of his you know, kind of brashness and burning cards and dire predictions, you know, about car every single card becoming worthless and all this kind of stuff. Uh, why did you, why did you choose to include him in the film and what was that like? Yeah. So you either love or you hate Vegas Dave, right? When you're in the card collecting community and, um, probably 10% of your individuals just turned the channel, right? When we said Vegas Dave there, that's how much uh, he's a controversial uh, person in this film. Uh, so when we're looking at it from a director standpoint, I want to show all sides of what happened during this time frame of 2017 to 2020. And he did play a role in it, whether it was calling the boom or calling the crash coming, right? He did sell, you know, the highest modern card at the time back when he did with Mike Trout. So in general, he belonged in it. And, uh, it's going to be interesting for everyone to see how he how he kind of sh is showcased in the film because he does his Vegas Dave routine, but there's sections where if you don't like Vegas Dave, you start to like him a little bit because of what he's saying, how he grew up in cards. He started when he was 14 years old, so I think there's going to be a really cool background story of Vegas Dave where individuals are going to uh, really enjoy seeing what he really has done across you know the entire time span of his life in sports cards, not just burning a Michael Jordan card to prove a point. And uh, I also thought you pulled up some other really interesting characters into the film as well. Obviously, people know Steve Aoki is, you know, a, a massive card collector. We've had him here on our channel a number of times before. But Josh Jacobs, another star out there in Las Vegas, obviously a, a very popular running back in the NFL. I did not know he was a card collector, uh, but you got, you got him in the film. And I thought that that had really an interesting storyline to it. Yeah, it's interesting, and uh, let's go Josh Jacobs this year. He's crushing it, right? Had a few big games coming out uh, beginning of the season, but he actually collects cards for his future family, future kids, which is really unique, right? As, a, as an athlete, you know, doing that early on, knowing that you want to hold a legacy long-term, that's really cool from a sports card uh, perspective. And, uh, you know, Josh Jacobs, uh, he was uh, top sales and jersey sales uh, as a running back. Um, I felt that during this time of the boom between, uh, I would say, 19 to 2021, receivers and running backs started getting higher priced as well from their rookie card. So instead of having a, a quarterback, like a lot of people like to talk about from a from an NFL standpoint, we felt like him coming in as a as a future star running back was like perfect. And uh, he's really showing up this year, which is awesome because that that's when we're releasing at the same time that he's he's crushing it. And it was just interesting to see how much he loves sports cards and collected it. But at the same time, you know, being a newer collector and, and him really starting at 2019 with his car, his rookie cards, he really didn't know a lot about grading and stuff like that. So it was interesting to teach him along the way during our interview about different sections of the movie. Yeah, that's awesome. And he's got some really good segments in the film. I think everyone who watches it out there is going to be excited to see that. There was also a moment of the film that caught me off guard, and I, I don't want to give too much away about it, but but Kobe was actually featured in the film. That was one of the most emotional parts of it. What what was what was that like? Yeah, kind of gave me a little goosebumps just thinking about that section, Jeff. Um, we wanted so again take uh, from the beginning here. I moved from Los Angeles, so I became uh, you know just a bandwagon Lakers fan, and you just love Kobe, right? Um, Panini being in it with our, with the CEO, Mark Warsaw, uh, you know, for a lot of people that may not know it, uh, Kobe Bryant was a, a band, what, like one of the first ambassadors for Panini when they got the license for basketball. So Panini really partnered with Kobe in a very close way for many years. So they were very distraught when, when, you know, that happened with Kobe and, uh, we asked uh, the CEO about it and, um, he was, he was, uh, he was pretty emotional. And it, it really captured, you know, the essence of giving essentially Kobe a salute in our film um, because the car community loves Kobe so much as well. You know, not just what he did on the field, but off the field, uh, off the court. So uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how emotionally connected individuals are to that piece. And we won't go too much into it because uh, it'll, it'll ruin the surprise a little bit, I think, for, for car collectors. But uh, we really wanted to give a salute to him um, since it, you know, happened so recently. 
yeah, that was, it was a, an incredible moment for sure. All right. So from the time you started this project to today, you know, that it's been a long process. I know you've gone through so many stages of this from, from the conceptualization to scheduling the interviews to all the filming you had to do along the way, tons of editing work, and then debuting this at film festivals and then, and then getting distribution, which I know is a, a difficult part of the equation as well. What, what do you feel like you learned the most through this entire experience? Yeah, so this was actually my first like theatrical film that I released. I uh, I don't even own a TikTok account, so I you know from a filming perspective, my wife Paula really uh, hit it hard on the content side. And what I learned is just uh, roll with the punches. Um, you know, there was ups and downs during filming, and uh, from a, a theatrical release, it, it takes longer than ever than just doing a video and put it on YouTube. So you know, the delay kind of was like, is this really a delay or not? It just happens, and what we focused on was really trying to edit this quickly, which actually took about five months. So we did this in April, May, took the rest of the year to edit. And then we went through a festival season, like you said, uh, for this year, early in the year, we actually won three festival awards. Um, but you know, that, that time delay being a card collector and knowing that the card community essentially turns over with new and exciting stuff happening monthly. Right. Um, we knew the fanatics thing was kind of happening with tops at the time, but we couldn't really get it in the film. So essentially trying to edit this for a documentary in the card community that can last for the next 10 years was my focus and probably the hardest part I had to do. So when you see it, you know, we essentially put it, whereas we showcase what the licenses used to be and where they're at today. So that individuals know that that changes often. So now that when fanatics comes up, not everyone's like, well, why wasn't fanatics in it? You know, you just know that it happened before that. So from my point of view is, you know, essentially trying to figure out how that linear path would work over time was what I focused on. And then interestingly, like Nick Gonzalez, we get down with him um, and we start to film. And the second we hit the little, you know, snap for, uh, for us to go, our, all of the electricity in the house turns off. So we have little things like that happen to us. We only have them for an hour, which ended up working out because we actually got them out because we were on the beach. So we actually got them outside on the beach, which was way cooler review for uh, Nick anyways in his interview. But it gave us like 25 minutes instead of an hour to interview because of daylight, you know, dissipating. So, you know, there's little ups and downs like that that happen and you just got to roll with it. And uh, everything just worked out. I mean, that sounds like every great entrepreneurial venture, right? Uh, things happen, you know, it's, it's uh, two steps forward and one step back if everything's going well. You know, that, that's the best case is one step back for every two steps forward. But as you said, you just got to roll with it. You got to go forward. And the end result is an excellent film. I'm super excited for everybody out there to see it. It's, it's absolutely great. So uh, one more time, Chris, let everybody know how they can go get tickets or find it on their TV set right now. Yeah, so at Behind the Card uh, on uh, Facebook, who's Behind the Card on Instagram. Uh, you can follow us there just to see where it goes out over the year here. But start in theaters. If it's near you, go on Fandango, check it out. Or on demand, in demand as well. You can rent it at home and watch it early as well. So looking for everybody checking it out. It's, uh, it's for the card community, but it's also not for the card community. We really wanted to provide people with the right knowledge uh, of the card space so that they join us here. Because the, the best thing that we can do is, is grow our community. So uh, please share this with everyone and, and make sure that everyone watches it because uh, we're going to have so much uh, larger communities moving forward uh, with this film being out. There you go. Behind the card, ladies and gentlemen, go get your tickets today or go order it on demand. You're going to enjoy it. Chris, thank you so much for joining Sports Card Investor. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Take care. Guys, I hope you're as excited about that as I am. I think this is such a great thing for the hobby that we have a full-length documentary in theaters and on demand right now. Please go support Behind the Card. Go look it up right now, Behind the Card. Give it your support. This is a great thing to gain more exposure for the awesome sports card hobby that we are all part of. I appreciate you guys watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you soon with our next one. Take care.